come on in, sit down and get comfortable. Scan the lights and says so squad and anybody else who's just passing through watching videos. If you are just passing through, I am Ashley with Ashley Says So and I make content about old Hollywood scandals as well as other things. But if you think this is something you would like, go ahead and click the like and subscribe button. Before we get started, I want to let you know that anything I say in this story is alleged. I am not sure what's true or what's false. I am just here to take rumor and gossip from yesteryear as well as online and tell you guys a story. Today we are going to do a story about the very complicated life. Uh, I think she was just missing a little bit of love. But anyways, we're going to do a story on Natalie Cole. Let's get to it. Natalie Cole was born on February the 6th, 1950 in Los Angeles, California. Her mother was singer Maria Hawkins Ellington and her father was famous singer Nat King Cole. Now Natalie was the eldest child born to Nat and Maria Cole, but she did end up growing up with four siblings. There was an older adopted sister, Carol Cookie Cole, who was actually Maria's sister's child. There was an adopted brother, Nat Kelly Cole. And lastly, there were twin sisters, Timeline and Casey, and they were birthed by Maria. Growing up as practically musical royalty, Natalie was around many great blues, jazz, and soul singers. So she herself started singing very early on. As a matter of fact, at the age of six, she recorded on her father's Christmas album. And then at age 11, she started performing with him at his shows and sometimes doing small shows of her own. Now, Natalie had a very close relationship with her father, Nat. I mean, she was a real daddy's girl. And rumors say that Maria did not like this relationship. She frowned down on her daughter and her husband's relationship. She felt like they were too close and not in the way of saying that Nat was doing anything wrong to Natalie, not like that. It was perfectly normal. Maria was just sort of jealous of the relationship and the time they spent together. And I'm not sure if Maria voiced her concern with Nat or Natalie or anybody else, but if she did, it did not stop anything. Father and daughter relationship was still going on. So rumor also says that Maria did get her payback, but that she got real grimy when she did it. Let me tell you about it. So Nat King Cole was diagnosed with lung cancer in 1964. And Maria, of course, knew about this, but she did not tell Natalie. In fact, I don't think she told any of the kids. And a lot of people are like, well, maybe she didn't want the kids to know, you know, she didn't want to hurt them. But hold on, listen to the rest of the story. Because it was also in 1964 that Maria started talking real heavy about sending Natalie off to some sort of girl school. You know, she just felt like her daughter needed to go to a upscale prep school. This is something that she really, really needed. And it was either at the end of 1964 or the beginning of 1965 that she got her wish. Natalie was sent away to a girl school. Very affluent, very upscale school called Northfield School for Girls. And this was located in New England. So Natalie gets to the school she gets settled she starts making friends and as soon as she gets enrolled she gets a call that her father has passed away from lung cancer this broke Natalie down to her core because she was not prepared she didn't even know her father had lung cancer so can you imagine her shock, her hurt, her surprise? And then another thing that supposedly hurt her is that instead of Maria, her mother, jumping in the car to come up and meet Natalie or fly up to meet Natalie, it is said that she didn't even come. She sent like somebody that worked for them or a chauffeur or somebody to drive up there and pick up her daughter. And she probably didn't show her face to Natalie because she probably knew that Natalie was going to blame her because that's exactly what happened. Natalie felt like her mother had did that out of spite, you know, like she wanted to get back at her daughter by basically making her miss her father's last days on these earth. She knew he was sick. And then you send your child away at the very end of his life like, oh, you sent me off so I can miss that? And supposedly this is the way Natalie felt. So after Nat passed away, her and Maria's relationship became very, very strained. You know, she didn't want to hear nothing her mama had to say. She started kind of being disobedient, disrespectful, because she felt like her mother didn't care about her. And I'm going to tell you another reason she felt her mother didn't care about her in just a minute, but that's when we get to the T, okay? So Natalie, who had been waiting for a chance to get away from her mother, quickly enrolled into the University of Massachusetts Amherst as soon as she could. And while she was there, she was still grieving over her father because she felt like she never got closure because she missed his last days. And she also still had that rebellious streak in her. So she started using drugs recreationally. You know, she was smoking weed. But at that time, almost all college students were smoking weed, just like they do today. So she wasn't the only one doing it. 
No matter how much weed she smoked though, she still stayed on her grades and she ended up graduating in 1972. Now believe it or not, at first Natalie Cole did not want to be a singer. She didn't. She told everyone that she didn't like how unpredictable it was. You know, she didn't like how you can be on top at one moment and then in the next moment the public then moved on and you down here. You know, she just didn't want that. She wanted a stable career as a child psychologist and just basically wanted to live a normal life. But of course, everybody was in her ear. Don't want to sing. And girl, you are a Cole. Your father is Nat King Cole. Like you were born to sing. It's in your bloodline. What do you mean you don't want to sing? And Natalie fought it off for a little while. You know, I don't care what my last name is. I don't want to sing. But then you get a little bit more of this. Mm-mm. Well, honey, you might not want to sing, but baby, I bet if my daddy was Nat King Cole, I'd be singing. You know, she's getting this from all sides, so sooner or later, she does end up singing. And she formed her own little band called Black Magic, and she started singing at little small local clubs, you know, pretty much any club that would have her. And there were plenty of clubs that did have her because her father was Nat King Cole. But then the club owners were sitting up there looking stupid when Natalie got up there and started singing like covers of new R&B songs singing covers of rock songs child them club owners was like what is you doing we thought you was gonna get up here talking about that's why darling it's incredible to have someone so unforgettable but natalie wasn't trying to do that natalie was trying to sing her own songs she was into the new stuff ain't nobody wanted to sing that stuff so of course the club owners had enough dignity not to go on stage and kick her little behind off but she wasn't invited back many more times after that. Oh yeah, let me throw this out there. This was also around the time that she used to sing Aretha Franklin covers, okay? So let's remember that. Now, even though the club owners were not clamoring to get Natalie back on stage, it did not even matter because she was already heard by Chuck Jackson and Marvin Yancey, and they were a songwriting and producing duo. And of course, when they heard her, they saw money because for one, she can sing, and then for two, it's Nat King Cole's daughter, like how easy it's gonna be to market this girl. So they invited her to a studio in Chicago and she went and she began recording demos. And very soon she was signed to Capitol Records. And as soon as she got signed, she got straight to work and in 1975 they released her first album. It was called Inseparable. And there was a song on that album that went straight to the top of the charts and it was called this will be. This will be, yes. An everlasting love. This will be, come on. Now it is said the reason this song took off so quickly is because it was a good song, of course, and also because it put people in the mind of Aretha Franklin. Some people even thought it was Aretha Franklin. And that is the word that started spreading around. You know, oh, that sound like Aretha. Honey, I thought it was Aretha. And this got back to Aretha. So here come Auntie Re. Y'all know she got to get a little petty. Started telling everybody, well, you know, that song was supposed to be for me, but I ended up turning it down because I'm already working on the album. Child them folks said, don't nobody know if that's true. Ain't nobody confirmed that. But to get back to the story, so the song is an instant success, as well as a couple of other songs on the Inseparable album. So of course, Natalie Cole is the new it girl. Everybody wants a piece of Natalie. You know, oh Natalie, come here, sing for me. She's invited to sing everywhere. And somebody has the bright idea to invite her to sing at a banquet that is dedicated to Aretha Franklin. And Natalie gets up there and performs her song very well. And honey, when it was over, Aretha comes and approaches her just like only the queen would. <laughs> hey, Natalie, girl, you did great. And honey, I'm hearing a lot about you. And so when she says this, Natalie got really happy and was like, oh my gosh, really? Like, I cannot believe that you are one of my favorites. That means so much to me. And of course, Aretha already knows this. You know what I'm saying? She knows that people say this girl sounds like her. You know, I'm pretty sure that she already knows that Natalie has done covers of her songs. She knows all this. So she responds in her best nice nasty tone. Oh really? Oh well, that's nice. So basically after this exchange, Natalie ends up kissing Aretha's butt a little bit more to let her know that she's not a threat to Aretha and everything is cool for now. In fact, it's so cool that Aretha starts sending her flowers before performances. You know, she's sending her little nice notes. She even starts to call Natalie on the phone, you know, and she get a little petty with one conversation and told Natalie, yes, girl, I performed This Will Be at Carnegie Hall and honey, everybody loved it. You know, I got a standing ovation, you know, trying to act 
like she pumping Natalie up, but really she just being petty. And then on Christmas one year, Aretha even called Natalie and wished her Merry Christmas. She told her that she was gonna be out where Natalie was that next month and they could meet up for lunch. Baby, that next month came and went. Natalie ain't heard a word from Aretha. So Natalie took it up on herself to call Aretha. You know, she wanted to ask her, girl, why you haven't called? You know, I thought you said we were supposed to do lunch. But every time she called Aretha, she started getting messages like, you know, Miss Franklin is busy. Miss Franklin is in the studio. Miss Franklin is not here. You know, getting all kind of excuses. So Natalie didn't really know what to make of it. She didn't know why this was happening, or so she says. See, rumor says, come to find out, Aretha had found out that Natalie was going around telling everybody, Chai, Aretha's sitting up there trying to call me. She's scared I'm trying to take her spot. So she want to call me and feel me out. See what I'm about. Sis, you ain't got to worry about it because if I wanted your spot, baby, I'd take it. You know, people saying Natalie's saying this kind of stuff. Basically, like Aretha's scared of her. Scared that Natalie's trying to take her spot. So she basically calling to keep tabs. You know, feel Natalie out. And Natalie's sitting up there like, baby, you ain't got to worry about it because if I want your spot, boo, I'm going to take it. You know, saying stuff like this. Now, Natalie says that she never said anything like that. But whether she did or not, it's clear that Aretha believes that. And y'all, I just want to say that I'm really sorry if y'all can hear that rain. I'm so sorry about that. So this little petty beef between them start to get out. You know, people start to mumble about it. The scandal, child. The scandal. And then, honey, everything gets turned up on its head because we have made it to Grammy night, 1976. So that night comes and both ladies walk in looking incredible. You know, they take their respective seats and everything is smooth all through the ceremony. You know, the ladies don't say a word to each other. And then, honey, best R&B female vocalist category comes up. And when they did, I'm sure Aretha started, you know, prepping herself. Maybe she was crimping her hair, you know, probably powdered her nose. You know, she's sitting back smiling, just taking it all in. She was very confident because she had won this eight times before. As a matter of fact, the last eight times in a row, she had won this category. So she's sitting there smiling, you know, even when the guy comes off and read off the nominees, you know, she's sitting there confident while they're voting everything is going good and then baby she got the shock of her life honey when that man opened up the envelope for the winner and said natalie cole oh child aretha ain't know what to do you know what i'm saying she's sitting up there looking around looking crazy but baby she had to hold it together so soon she started you know clapping her hands and smiling you know she was trying to display a lot of tact even though i am sure that she was fuming on the inside because this was her title the last eight years and then you got this girl to come up here to sing in songs that sound like yours and she didn't want the title baby no but aretha kept it together you know she kept it together even when they opened up another envelope and it said best new r&b artist and i'm pretty sure aretha knew she wasn't gonna win this because she was not a new artist but still when them folks fixed their lips to say Natalie Cole, I know that it took everything Aretha had not to jump up out of that seat. But like I said, she held it together. That is until after the show when she just couldn't keep it together no more, honey. Baby, they said Natalie gonna come up to Aretha talking about some, Hi, Aretha. Hey, Aretha. Girl, why haven't you called me? And try Natalie knew better than stopping Aretha and asking her that. Honey, they said Aretha was like, how come I haven't called, huh? Girl, if y'all move out of my way. And Natalie should have knew it was going to happen like that. Because, baby, even without the rumors that Aretha heard about Natalie talking about her and all this kind of stuff, anybody is going to be a little bit perturbed that they've been beaten like that. And they probably don't want to talk right at that moment. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, that is what supposedly happened. That is the rumor. Let's move on. So at this moment, Natalie Cole is really a star. She has become a superstar because she has won her Grammys. Her songs are doing well. People do not think she's going to do as well with her second album, but she does. It was called Natalie and it had two songs, Sophisticated Lady and Mr. Melody, that helped the album reach gold status. So outside of the Grammys, there was something else that happened in 1976. Natalie Cole ended up marrying one of those men that found her and produced her at the very beginning, Mr. Marvin Yancey. And they had a son, Robert Yancey, who was born in 1977. After marrying Marvin, Natalie released her third album. It was called Unpredictable and the song I've Got Love On My Mind skyrocketed once again 
this album went platinum. And also in 1977, she released her fourth album. It was called Thankful and it had a song on there that also skyrocketed called Our Love. And this album went platinum as well. So it seems like everything is going well in Natalie Land and her life is A-OK. -okay. But let me tell you something, everything was not 100%. First things first, everybody had been so busy pushing Natalie up and celebrating her success that nobody had noticed that her drug use had turned from recreational to a problem. For instance, in 1975 in Toronto, Canada, she was arrested for heroin possession. But at that point in time, heroin was really not her drug of choice. I think she probably was just trying it or probably just using it a couple of times because her real drug of choice was cocaine. And her cocaine habit was already super duper bad when she married her husband Marvin, but when they got together, it became even worse because they started freebasing cocaine. Essentially, they were smoking crack. And those two together were high, high, high. They were so high that they were smoking so much that they were smoking all their money away. Like they barely had any money because as soon as they brought it in, they smoked it away. So then they came up with a brilliant plan or a plan that they thought was brilliant with their high mind. They figured that it didn't matter how much money that they had spent because see now they were gonna sell crack. They were gonna cook it and they were gonna sell it and they were gonna make all that money and more. So they essentially turned their kitchen or some part of their house into a crack lab. And do y'all know who was in that kitchen cooking it up? And the kitchen wrist twist up like a stir fry. Y'all know who was doing that? Natalie Cole herself. Honey, she said she was the queen of doing free base. People used to call her the gourmet chef of cooking crack. She was also known as the gourmet chef of cocaine. Now true enough, as she was doing this, she still was kind of able to keep it together. I mean, she was functioning in some way because she was still singing and in 1979, she did get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And she released two more albums, one with Peebo Bryson and they did pretty well. But still though, most people cannot keep it together for long and Natalie was one of those. And soon things begin to go downhill Fast. In 1980, she and her husband Marvin Yancey got a divorce and Natalie basically holed herself up into her house and just was basically going on crack binges. She was doing it so bad that one time her son Robert was in the pool drowning and she had no idea because she was holed up in the house on a crack bin. And what's even worse, somewhere along the line, she started doing crack and heroin. And when she started doing this, this took over her family, her child, her music career and everything. And she basically got full blown caught up into the drug. Baby, they said Miss Natalie Cole was so high, one day she was in a building and the building caught on fire. And she was basically, I don't know if it was a hotel or what, but she was in a room of the building and they were like, the building is on fire. Come on, come on, Natalie. She wouldn't move. Sitting in the room, high as a kite, would not leave the room. And I'm not sure if somebody had to come in there and basically drag her out of the room or if she finally snapped out of it, but I do know she ended up getting out before the building burned down. But come on now. And then we get to a bit of tea where she started to have problems with a couple of more singers. Aretha wasn't the only one. There was a time they said that she was at a show, I guess Diana Ross had performed or something like that. And after the show, everybody was around Diana Ross's dressing room and there was a piano in there. So Natalie comes sauntering her way in there and she's on the piano and she's just singing and singing and they claimed everybody was having a good time. But apparently the one person who wasn't was Diana Ross and she was basically looking like, uh, why is she here? And then I guess she told somebody, she getting on my nerves. Y'all need to get her out of here. So they took Natalie and escorted her out. And it is also rumored that she was jealous of Whitney Houston, but I don't believe this rumor because I've always read that she and Whitney were cool. And there's also a clip of her and Whitney like, pointing back and forth at a war show or something like that. Looks like to me they were having a good time. So, you know, maybe somebody close to her knew that she was jealous and she didn't let the world know because I just don't believe that. And then there's this other bit of tea and this will take you all the way back to when Natalie was in college, but supposedly she slept with Dr. J one night and she said that it was real good because Honey, she said, I mean, long as everything, which I guess that's believable because Dr. J is long as everything. Now, back to the drugs. It is said that Natalie actually cleaned herself up at one point in time, like she went through withdrawals. She did everything necessary to get herself clean. And then she went to New York and she ended up meeting a man named Ronnie. And she was in hard times. You know, she had basically spent all her money on drugs. So Ronnie was like, you know, 
it's good that you clean, but you don't have any money. So come with me and I'll show you how to get money. Like I can really supplement your income. And Natalie was like, okay, great. Tell me what to do. Baby, that man had that woman on the street soliciting for prostitutes, honey. Woo! Child. Natalie said she was out there on the street showing some leg, baby. Telling the folks, you know, come over here. We got something for you, daddy. And then when they got over there, supposedly Natalie just like scooted them onto another woman. She said that she never did turn tricks. You know, she was never the prostitute, but she told them to come on in. Check this out, daddy. And when they got over there, they slept with somebody else. Moving on. So yes, if y'all didn't get that from me saying all that, Ronnie ended up being a pimp. And that's the way he told Natalie she could make her money. That didn't last long, thank goodness. But again, Natalie did spend time soliciting. And I guess her being around prostitutes and pimps or something made her go back to drugs because it's rumored that after this, she did get back on drugs. And this time she got so, so bad that her mother Maria had to step in and basically went to court and lobbied to get like control over her daughter. You know, she wanted to, I don't know the word for it, but you know, basically guardianship or something over her daughter because her daughter, she felt like could not take care of herself. She felt like her daughter was too far gone. And Natalie herself says that she was too far gone. But, 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 but. Rumor says that Maria didn't understand that one of the reasons that Natalie was so far gone like that was because of Maria herself. Baby, these folks is out here saying that Maria was a nasty, nasty woman, honey. They said she was nasty. Not only did she do that stuff with Natalie basically making her miss her father's death, they said that she treated Natalie bad anyway. See, the problem was is that Maria was a colorist. She felt like people that were light-skinned were better than dark-skinned people. And Natalie even said herself that Maria basically treated the family like the Black Kennedys. She wanted her family to act above people. She did not want her children to be friends with Black people. She didn't even want Natalie and her kids or anybody in her family associating with the Black servants. You know what I'm saying? She told her children, you know, basically, they're beneath you. You need to associate with white people. You need to associate with a higher class. Black people won't do anything but drag you down. But see, not only was Maria this way, Natalie even said that her grandmother was this way, Maria's mother. You see, Maria was a part of the black boule, you know, the bourgeoisie, the high class black people that came from old money. And so it is said that Maria's mother and her father, in fact, almost her whole family outside of her sister, felt like she shouldn't even marry Nat King Cole. They felt like he was too dark, that he really couldn't do much for their daughter. You know, it was wonderful that he was a singer, but oh no, his skin is so black. Wouldn't you like to marry somebody else? But Maria was like, hey, you know, this guy's making a lot of money and I love him. So I'm going to marry him. And I know I was a little messy with doing love like that when I did my eyes all around. But I do question the love that she had for him because the thing is with me is if you love this black dark skinned man so much, when y'all had a dark skinned daughter, why were you treating her differently? Because yes, it said that she treated Natalie differently. It said that she even treated her adopted daughter better than Natalie because her adopted daughter was light skinned and Natalie was dark skinned. And so this is said to have played a part in Natalie's depression, a part in her drug abuse. And to be real honest with y'all, I don't even feel like Maria married Nat for the money or because she was in love with him. I honestly feel like she married Nat King Cole because of the status. You see, she could have found any kind of wealthy, light-skinned man who would have married her, but it was the status, it was the fact of being Nat King Cole's wife. That's what I think, because listen now, rumor says that Maria actually played side chick to Nat King Cole when he was married to his first wife, Nadine. I didn't know that when I did the Nat King Cole video, but honey, rumor says that Maria was a doggone side chick. So that meant that she basically was putting her claws into Nat because she wanted to be Nat King Cole's wife. But child, that status ain't mean nothing to Maria's family because like I said, her family did not want her to marry Nat's black self. It is said that they even told Maria that your kids might come out looking funny. Uh-uh, because when they skin too dark, they have too many black characteristics. Ugh! And ha <laughs> now let's get into one of the biggest Nat King Cole rumors around. And I didn't know this on his video. Y'all know I find out some info after. 
Well, it's said that really and truly, he felt in his heart that he married the wrong sister. He was truly and deeply in love with Maria's sister, but he did not know that until he found out how Maria was. And apparently her sister was nothing like her. You know, her sister was supposedly kind, warm-hearted, and that King Cole really felt an attraction to her and that he married the wrong sister. But see, the funny thing is, is that while Maria was acting like this, her family and everybody was laughing at her. Child Natalie said that she would sneak downstairs and see her mother sneaking and eating chitlins, honey, from fine china and crystal. How you gonna eat chitlins out of fine china and crystal? You know, basically, she liked the black food, but she can't be black, you know, only can eat off of fine china. Girl, go on and tear them chitlins up like you want to. And here is the last big rumor on Maria. It is rumored that Maria actually cheated Natalie as well as the other children out of their inheritance. She took all of their money that their father left for them and she kept it for herself. And that is so trifling to me if it is true because that means Natalie was out here tricking child, basically soliciting people for prostitution because she didn't have any money when really she probably had a lot of money. And honey, I know I just hit y'all with some whammies, but listen, this is not their video. This is Natalie's video, so let's get back on track. Now, it is said that Natalie finally entered rehab in 1983, and while she was there, she was only supposed to stay, I think, for six weeks, but she ended up staying for like six months or something like that because she said she felt like she wasn't ready. And while she was in rehab, that is when she finally faced her demons and one of those demons supposedly was that she was molested as a child it does not say by who but it is rumored that she was molested and also it is here that she noticed that a lot of what was eating her up was the fact that Maria had done these things to her that treated her this way. You know, she was hurt by the relationship she had with her mother. And after those six months were over and she faced her demons, supposedly Natalie got clean. Some people say that Natalie was not clean. You know, she was working on it, but they say she didn't get real, real clean until much later. But per Natalie, in 1983, that is when she got clean. Whatever the case, it is said that she was most definitely clean by the time 1989 came around and she married her second husband. His name was Andre Fisher. And he actually played with the band Rufus. And Andre Fisher was supposedly very, very abusive. He beat on Natalie Cole. Shaka Khan is rumored to have said one time that he jumped on her while she was pregnant. Whitney Houston says she used to call him Tick Tick Boom because she never knew when he was gonna snap and start beating on Natalie. Whether he beat on her or not, apparently he didn't treat her that well. And in 1995, Natalie Cole was tired of it and they divorced. And in 2001, Natalie married again for the third time. And this guy's name was Bishop Kenneth Dupree. And they stayed married until 2004. Now, since by 1989, Natalie Cole was clean and everything was back on track, in the 1990s, she started recording again. And in 1991, she put out her best-selling album to date. And that was called Unforgettable With Love. This album sold over 7 million copies and it also won several Grammys. And when Natalie performed it live, she basically used to have a screen up showing her dad and they would sort of duet back and forth on the song. It was very sweet and the audience ate it up. And I think after this, she ended up earning like one more Grammy, but that was because of a collab she did with somebody and she put out a few more records, but none of them reached the heights of success that Unforgettable With Love had reached. Now on top of her singing, Natalie also did some acting over the years and also I believe she has several TV appearances. But then in 2008, all of those years of drug abuse came back to bite her and she was diagnosed with hepatitis C. Now, according to Natalie, she had had this disease for at least 25 years. Like this went all the way back to when she was basically sharing needles with people that she trusted, you know, but basically they all were in the drug circles together. So, you know, she couldn't really blame them. They were all using the same needles and there's no telling how many people she infected. And after her diagnosis, I don't know if Natalie was like, upset at the fact that she had been diagnosed with something or if she wanted to try to be preachy to people or what happened but i do know in 2008 she got upset with the recording academy like the grammys because they gave amy winehouse like five grammys natalie cole was basically fussing about that she didn't feel like amy winehouse deserved those grammys and her reason for saying this was because amy winehouse
else was on drugs. You know, she's not a good influence to anybody. But a lot of people were like, Natalie, you, the pot calling the kettle black. Like, I know you claim you're trying to do a good thing by saying, oh, y'all shouldn't honor that. She's on drugs and all this kind of stuff. But baby, you was hush mouth when you was sitting up there getting your Grammys and you was on drugs. You know what I'm saying? And I know that she can say, well, people didn't know I was on drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like Amy Winehouse, she's basically celebrating that she's on drugs. You know, trying to say, trying to make me go to rehab. You know, that's not good. But still though, even though you were not making songs to celebrate it, you were on drugs as well when you won your Grammy. So I get what she was trying to say, but it did not go over well with a lot of people. Now, four months after being diagnosed with hepatitis C, Natalie Cole's kidney failed and she had to be on dialysis three times a week for nine months. It was a really hard time for her and people wanted to help her out and donate a kidney. There was actually this one family that said, hey, our family member has passed if this kidney matches Natalie Cole's, give it to her. So in 2009, she did do a kidney replacement surgery. And so she was just now really getting her health back together. I mean, things were never gonna be like they were when she was really young and healthy, but she was kind of working on her health and you know, trying to make things work. And then in 2012, her mother Maria passed away. And this is when a little bit more mess happened. And this was the public being messy right here though. Because see, after her mother had passed, there were pictures that had surfaced of Natalie coming out of a restaurant looking very, very emaciated. I mean, she did, she looked pretty bad, okay? And I don't know if it was because of the sickness that she had or because of the stress about her mother, but people put out a nasty rumor and basically said that she had AIDS. And I mean, I don't, I, I just can't see that. I don't see this woman having AIDS because it seems like if that was the case, it would have like really, really come out to the public. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't have just been no hush hush rumor and a blind item because that's basically what suggested it. A blind item suggested this lady had AIDS. So I just don't believe that. What I truly think it was is that maybe she never resolved those issues she had with Maria. So this would be the second parent that passed away that she wasn't able to get closure from. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't able to get those problems resolved. And I'm just speaking from the outside looking in, just like I'm telling all this story from the outside looking in. But what if that was the case, guys? That is a lot. That is hard for somebody. So it's not that shocking to see them come out looking like a skeleton pretty much because there's so many unresolved issues on top of health problems, on top of just too many bad memories. It's a lot. So after her mother's death, Natalie continues to perform off and on. And I do believe she did a few more television appearances. And then she did her last performance on August the 8th, 2015. And she passed away on December the 31st, 2015. And this happened because of heart failure. And they said that it was brought on by years of drug use, of course, as well as the kidney transplant. And so this is the really sad, really complicated life of Natalie Cole. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Go ahead and click like and subscribe if you're new here. Oh, and then also all of y'all that saw me post that picture on the community tab, child, y'all know that picture wasn't me. And then folks being messy talking about, ooh, talking about you look good. Y'all know I ain't lost all that weight at this time. Look at me. Sitting up there acting like that was my real body. I was just playing with y'all. But thank y'all for the compliment. And yes, I'm speaking it into existence. Honey, I got my gym membership. Baby, I am rest to go. You hear me? But y'all know that wasn't me. Sitting up there being messy. Woo! Bye, y'all.